After going through this module, you will be able to learn about the regulations of telecommunication market before 1998, learn about the developments in sectoral regulations since the liberalization of telecommunication market till NTP 2012. For any country's socio-economic development, telecommunication services are recognized as important tool. It acts as a major support service for all the other industries, rapid growth and modernization. Through significant policy reforms, Indian telecommunication services has transformed totally from its earlier stage. The NTP, that is National Telecom Policy of 1994 and NTP 1999 was the main driving force for the development of telecom sector. During the past decade, several sectoral reforms were introduced for growth of this sector. As a result of these reforms, Indian telecom industry emerged as one of the best performing industry in the recent years. Regulations of Telecommunication Market Before 1998 In 1980s, Telecom services were fully under the control of the Department of Post and Telegraph. The telecom industry was entirely in the government ownership. In 1984, private sector players were allowed to step in in manufacturing of telecommunication equipment. In the same year of 1984, as part of reforms, government set up Center for Development of Telematics, that is CDOT. CDOT was an autonomous body created to carry out the research and development activity in telecom sector. In 1985, Department of Post and Telegraph was separated and two separate departments were set up as the Department of Post and Department of Telecommunication, that is DOT, DOT. DOT was a wholly owned government operator for whole telecom services in India. DOT was responsible for planning, installing, managing, engineering, maintenance and management of telecom services in India. Further, in 1986, government set up two new public sector undertakings known as MTNL that is Mahanagar Telephone Nigam Limited and VSNL that is Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited. MTNL was set up to operate and look after the telephone services in two metro cities, namely Delhi and Mumbai. VSNL's main aim was to operate, develop, maintain and accelerate the growth of international telecom services in India. DOT continued to provide and look after the telecom services in the rest of India other than Delhi and Mumbai. Till this time, telephone was not a necessity, it was a luxury service affordable only by few citizens in the society. In 1989, Telecom Commission was set up as an executive body in order to assist DOT in policy regulation. In 1991, India adopted new economic policy. New economic policy objectives were unattainable without world-class quality telecom services. This gave trust to reforms in telecom sector, resulting liberalization in the sector. Government allowed the private sector participation in value-added services such as paging and cellular services. In 1994, government adopted National Telecom Policy 1994, that is NTP 1994. National Telecom Policy 1994. NTP 1994 was announced in 1994. Main aim of this policy was to achieve rapid growth in exports by improving India's competitiveness in the global market. NTP 1994 recognized the fact that private investors should be allowed to bridge the resource gap in the services. Main highlighting points of this policy were to ensure that telephone is accessible to all, that is availability of telephone on demand, to provide world-class telecom services, to provide universal availability of basic telecom services to all villages at reasonable and affordable prices, to ensure that India arises as major exporter and major manufacturer of telecom equipment, to attract FDI and motivate domestic investors to invest in the telecom sector, it also announced series of specific targets which were to be achieved by the end of 1997. 
participation of private sector was allowed in a phased manner. In the beginning, private sector was allowed only in the value added services. Later on, they were allowed to participate in fixed telephone services also. Establishment of TRI, that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. With the entry of private participant in telecom sector, a need was felt for an independent regulator. On 20 February 1997, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India was established by an Act of Parliament known as Telecom Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997. TRI was aimed to regulate the telecom services, fixation and revision of tariffs for the telecom services. Earlier, these powers were with the central government. Main objective of TRI was to create fair and transparent policy environment which will ultimately give rise to the fair competition. The functions allotted to TRI included A. To protect the interest of consumers of telecom sector B. To settle dispute among service providers if any C. To recommend the terms and conditions of license to a service provider D. To render the advice to the central government on the matters relating to the development of telecommunication technology. E. To recommend the need and timing for entry of new service provider in the market. TRI has issued large number of directives, orders and regulations from time to time to deal with the specific issues. This has helped in the evolution of telecom sector. At one point of time, Indian telecom sector was fully owned by government but now it was very competitive with the existence of multiple private operators. Telecommunications Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal that is TDSAT was established in the year 2000 after making an amendment in TRI Act. TDSAT took over all the adjudicatory and disputes functions from TRI. TDSAT can adjudicate any dispute between A. Between a licensor and a licensee B. Between two or more service providers C. Between a service provider and a group of consumers D. To hear and dispose of appeals against any direction, decision or order of try. Evolution of sectoral regulation since the liberalization of telecommunication market. In late 1990, government expected that economy's growth was very much dependent on the growth of telecom sector. Telecom sector directly and indirectly put impacts on the country's GDP. Now, the need of the new forward-looking telecommunication policy was felt. So, to achieve India's dream of becoming IT superpower and creating world-class telecom infrastructure, new telecom policy 1999 was announced. New Telecom Policy 1999 The main objectives of NTP 1999 were as follows. Main goal of this new telecom policy was to make availability of effective and affordable communications for citizens. Provide a balance between provision of universal service to all uncovered areas including rural areas and the provision of high level services capable of meeting the needs of the economy. Encourage development of telecommunication facilities in remote, hilly and tribal areas of the nation. To facilitate India's journey to becoming an IT superpower by creating a modern and efficient telecommunication infrastructure, taking into account the coverage of IT, media, telecom and consumer electronics. Convert PCOs wherever justified into public telephone information centers having multimedia capability such as ISDN services, remote database access, government and community information systems, etc. To bring about a competitive environment in both urban and rural areas by providing the equal opportunities and level playing field for all players. Providing a thrust to build world-class manufacturing capabilities and also strengthen the research and development efforts in the country. Achieve efficiency and transparency in spectrum management. Protect the defense and security interest of the country. Enable Indian telecom companies to become global players. In line with the above objectives, the specific targets that the NTP 1999 seeks to achieve were as follows. 
make available telephone on demand by the year 2002 and sustain it thereafter so as to achieve a tele density of 7 by the year 2005 and 15 by the year 2010. Encourage the development of telecom in rural areas, making it more affordable by suitable tariff structure and making rural communication mandatory for all fixed service providers. Increase the rural tele density from the current level of 0.4 to 4 by the year 2010 and provide reliable transmission media in all rural areas. Achieve telecom coverage of all villages in the country and provide reliable media to all exchanges by the year 2002. Provide internet access to all district headquarters by the year 2000. Provide high speed data and multimedia capability using technologies including ISDN to all towns with a population greater than 2 lakhs by the year 2002. Almost all the objectives set up in NTP 1999 has been achieved. Today, telecom sector is completely reformed. Private players are operating in all the sectors of telecommunication. Next is the developments in telecom sector after 2000. Telecom sector has witnessed major policy developments in and after year 2000. BSNL, that is Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited, was incorporated in September 2000. BSNL is one of the largest and one of the leading state-owned enterprise and operates in whole of India except New Delhi and Mumbai. BSNL provides a wide range of telecom services in India. Next noteworthy step was privatization of VSNL that is Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited in 2002. Tata Communications acquired the 45% stake in VSNL in 2002. This ended the monopoly of VSNL in international long distance calling. Open competition was allowed in national long distance that is NLD and international long distance that is ILD services. Government introduces two licenses namely cellular mobile telephone services that is CMTS and basic telecom services that is BASIC. These two licenses allowed the private sector players to join telecom services in India. Further, government introduced Unified Access Licensing that is UASL in 2003. UAS license allowed providing both services of BASIC and CMTS under the realm of one license. In 2005, FDI limit was increased from 49% to 74% and mobile number portability in 2008 flagged away for the noteworthy growth in the sector. Let's see these developments one by one in detail. First is universal service obligation. In order to provide affordable telecom services to all people and to provide access to telecom services in rural areas, government set up a universal service obligation fund in April 2002. The Indian Telegraph Amendment Act 2003 provided the statutory status to the Universal Service Obligation Fund that is USOF. The resources for USOF would be generated through a Universal Access Levi that is UAL. UAL would be the percentage of the revenue earned by the operators under various licenses. The UAL presently is 5% of the adjusted gross revenue that is AGR earned by all operators except pure value added services providers like internet, voicemail and email service providers etc. In addition, the central government may also provide grants and loans. This fund is utilized for the purpose of developments of telecom sector in rural and remote areas such as a to increase wireless network, b to provide public access through public or community telephone, and C, to provide individual telephones in identified net high cost rural and remote areas. With the help of this fund, tele density in rural areas was to be increased. This fund was to be utilized to create mobile and broadband services infrastructure in rural areas. By amending the Indian Telegraph Act of 1885, Mobile services were included under basic telephony in rural areas. 
This helped the cellular service providers to access the USOF for creating telecom infrastructure in rural areas. The second is the universal access regime. In 2001, basic service operators in India were allowed to provide limited mobility service in their coverage areas using CDMA, wireless local loop that is WLLM technology. They were also offering all India mobility using CDMA WLLM technology. Price of these services were lower as compared to GSM cellular mobile services. This increased the popularity of CDMA WLLM services. Now CDMA WLLM services were seen as good substitute of GSM cellular mobile services. Finally, government decided to combine these two services and introduce the Unified Access Services known as UAS licensing regime for basic and cellular services in 2003. Under UAS, licensing both basic and cellular service operator have freedom to offer basic or cellular mobile services using any technology. Ultimately, this gave rise to fair competitive market for the service operators. For providing unified access services, country is divided into 23 service areas. These service areas consist of 19 telecom circles and 4 metro service areas. The license for unified access service is issued on non-exclusive basis for a period of 20 years. This license is extendable by 10 years at one time within the territorial jurisdiction of the license service area. Third is interconnection usage charges regime. Interconnection of services is of great importance for service providers and even for users. To make local, national and international calls possible, a variety of networks of fixed and mobile phones National Long Distance Network and International Long Distance Network have to work together in interconnection with each other. All this makes necessary to have an effective interconnection usage charge regime. TRI announced and implemented the Telecommunication Interconnection Usage Charge known as IUC regulation in 2003. These regulations decided the terms and conditions of interconnectivity between various service providers. Now, there were clear regulations among service providers for sharing their revenues which are derived from providing telecommunication services to each other. Fourth is the Internet Service Providers. In 1998, Internet service were open for private participation. This increased the penetration of Internet and encouraged growth of Internet services. Keeping in mind the general public interest and particularly the consumer interest, government decided to issue new guidelines for the grant of internet services. Now any Indian company with a maximum foreign equity of 74% is eligible for grant of license. Fifth is Broadband Policy 2004. Penetration of internet services and broadband were very low till December 2003. On the recommendations of TRI to increase the internet and broadband penetration in India, government announced broadband policy on 2004. The main emphasis of broadband policy was to create an infrastructure for the growth of broadband using various technologies. These technologies include optical fiber, cable TV network, direct to home and asymmetric digital subscriber lines, etc. It was recognized that by improving the broadband services, there will be a positive impact on the society. There will be increased usage of online education, telemedicine, e-governance, entertainment and employment opportunities. Sixth, foreign direct investment. FDI is the major source of financial investment made for the growth of telecom sector. In 2005, the government allowed 74% of FDI in telecom companies. Earlier, this limit was 49%. This resulted in incomparable foreign direct investment in the telecom sector. FDI up to 100% was allowed in respect of the following telecom services. A. Infrastructure providers providing dark fiber. B. Electronic mail. And C. Voicemail. 
Seventh is mobile number portability. Mobile number portability, known as MNP, provides subscribers opportunity to change their telecom service providers while retaining their previous number. It is two-way sword. On the one hand, it provides more choice and freedom to the consumer. And on the other hand, it also encourages the telecom service providers to further improve their services to retain the existing consumers. On 1st August 2008, Department of Telecommunication announced the guidelines for MNP service license and has issued a separate license for the MNP service with effect from 20th March 2009. As per the regulations, the subscribers would be allowed to retain their mobile number while moving from within the same service circle one access providers to another irrespective of the mobile technology or platform or one cellular mobile technology to another of the same access provider. For the purpose of MNP, country is geographically divided into two number portability zones, namely zone 1 and zone 2. Each zone consists of 11 license service areas. Eighth is spectrum management. Spectrum management is very important these days. Use of radio waves or radio frequencies for the purpose of telecommunication services is known as spectrum. Spectrum is treated as public property and government is only the caretaker of this public property. In India, spectrum is shared among railways, ONGC, defense and telecommunication services etc. In telecom sector, spectrum is shared by both GSM and CDMA cellular service providers. Spectrum is important factor in the growth of wireless services. Recognizing this fact, Indian government set up two committees. First was Spectrum Management Committee and the other was a steering group on spectrum pricing. Both were set up in 1999. In India, assignment of spectrum is governed by the National Frequency Allocation Plan known as NFAP 2002 and International Radio Regulation of the International Telecommunication Union, that is ITU. After taking in account changes in the international allocations and changes in the national spectrum requirement, as well as emerging technologies, NFAP has been revised from time to time. Ninth, National Telecom Policy, that is NTP, of 2012. In the year 2012, DOT introduced NTP 2012. The main objective of NTP 2012 are as follows. First, provide secure, affordable and high quality telecommunication services to all citizens. Second, increase rural teledensity from the current level of around 39 to 70 by the year 2017 and 100 by the year 2020. Third, provide affordable and reliable broadband on demand by the year 2015 and to achieve 175 million broadband connections by the year 2017 and 600 million by the year 2020 at minimum 2 Mbps download speed. Fourth, provide high speed and high quality broadband access to all village panchayats through a combination of technologies by the year 2014. Fifth, promote innovation, indigenous research and development and manufacturing to serve domestic and global markets by increasing the skills and competencies. Sixth, simplify the licensing framework to further extend the converged high quality service across the nation including rural and remote areas. Seventh, strive to create one nation, one license across services and service areas. Eighth, achieve one nation full mobile number portability and work towards one nation free roaming. Ninth, reposition the mobile phone from a mere communication device to an instrument of empowerment that combines the communication with proof of identity, fully secure financial and other transaction capability, multilingual services and the whole range of other capabilities that ride on them and transcend the literacy barrier. Tenth, put in place a simplified merger and acquisition regime in telecom service sector while ensuring adequate competition. Eleventh, ensure adequate availability of spectrum and its allocation in a transparent manner through market related processes. Twelfth, 
promote efficient use of spectrum with the provision of regular audit of spectrum usage. 13. Enhance and continued adoption of green policy in telecom and incentivize use of renewable energy sources for sustainability. 14. Strengthen the grievance redressal mechanisms to provide timely and effective resolution. 15. Put in place a web-based real-time e-governance solution to support online submission of applications including processing, issuance of licenses and clearance from DOT. NTP 2012 is very progressive in its outlook. It is going to provide the required impetus to the growth of telecom sector. Let us now summarize what we have studied in this module. In 1980s, telecom services were fully under the control of Department of Post and Telegraph. In 1985, Department of Telecommunication, that is DOT, was created. DOT was a wholly owned government operator for whole telecom service in India. In 1994, government adopted National Telecom Policy 1994, which was known as NTP 1994. NTP 1994 recognized the fact that private investors should be allowed to bridge the resource gap in services. In 1997, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India was established. TRI was aimed to regulate the telecom services, fixation and revision of tariffs for telecom services. To achieve India's dream of becoming IT superpower and creating world-class telecom infrastructure, NTP 1999 was announced. Telecom sector has witnessed major policy developments in and after year 2000. Universal Service Obligation Fund, Universal Access Regime, Interconnection Usage Charges Regime, Broadband Policy 2004, Increase of FDI 2005, Limit from 49% to 74% and Mobile Number Portability in 2008 and Spectrum Management are notable developments. In the year 2012, DOT introduced NTP 2012, that is NTP 2012. NTP 2012 is very progressive in its outlook.